Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my beautiful and talented co-host and producer of the Model Health Show, Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? Howdy doody, Sean. Did you say howdy doody? <laughs> I did. Okay, all right. I did. How are you today? Today I am sunny and tiful. Sunny and tiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's Feeling that? plentiful and filled with sunshine. Sunny and tiful. Oh, my goodness. I like that. I thought she was going <laughs> to go into sunny days. Hey. In the clouds away. That's Shout right. out to Sesame Street. That's right. Serious question, day. though. Serious question, though. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. Right. Why? You understand. Why? Because there exists the Grouch in each of us. He lives in a trash can. We can How symbolic identify is that? that. It's huge. Right? And complains about everything outside of that trash can. I remember one episode they went down <laughs> into the trash can with him to his crib. Uh -huh. It was like MTV uh -huh. Cribs in the trash can. <laughs> right. It's fantastic. I was wondering like That's epic. what's going on mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. All good. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. <laughs> We've got a very very important and powerful episode lined up for you. Uh this is something that I really work to talk about is on as many platforms as I possibly can. And that's the importance of cultivating a positive environment. Yes. Now, <laughs> and you were just talking about Oscar. That's <laughs> right. great. I mean, because he was content in that his That just stuff. came from the ethers right it there. It worked out perfectly. And as you're going to discover today, we are truly a uh, product of our environments, but, but we're also creators of our environments. And it's very important for you to understand that. And today you're going to get the science behind why that is and also some very powerful stories to help to guide you in some practices, in some new uh, mental frameworks to help you to really cultivate an environment that helps to put success on automatic in your life. We struggle far too much because we're fighting against what is. We're fighting against what's around us, and we can do things about that to change and help to really usher in a new way of living. Before we do that, I've got to ask you a question. Uh, it, I, know, I don't know about you, okay. but for me, a big expense in my house is... <laughs> The cost of food, what we spend oh, on please. food, personal care yes. items. We're looking at the budget, and I was actually just, I was doing some research for this incredible guest we have coming up. Okay. And I was just blown up because it, one of the exercises was to look at our budget, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I'm just kind of like, here you go, you know, you handle that part. <laughs> right, right. But I looked at, I was like, how? Right. Where does it go? Yes. Where does this food go? And I do have a 16 year old who's working on his games all the time, growing five year old boy mm -hmm. in the house as well. But, you know, I, I'm not too shy around the plate, you know, so I we all get our grub on. Oh, and that's one of the things that tied together my wife and I. Like, this is a woman. She wasn't afraid. She wasn't like, I'll just take the salad. It's a side. No, she was like, give me the sandwich right. with the fries. Double them. You and know? the salad. And I was like, oh, okay. You cute and you eat. I like that. I like that. But that's of course, the best combo. Of course, we've evolved in our eating since uh -huh. then and eating much more nutritious food. And that's the issue, though. Mm -hmm. That's the issue is that... Today, because our economy is so flipped upside down and with gov government subsidy subsidies, we're looking at a situation today where the cost of an avocado yep, outweighs sir. the cost of two cheeseburgers from a fast food restaurant. Yes, sir. So in, in my premise growing up is like, I'm going to buy something so I can get full, mm -hmm. right? That was the, the modus operandi. That was the goal. And that it was had to the, be cheap. I was trying to get full. I didn't I didn't care about nutrition. Right. I just wanted to eat something that tasted good and is going to get me full. Absolutely. And that's where most of our society is still living. You know, today, oftentimes, you know, especially in platforms like this where we have all of these amazing health shows and people who are in our communities who are really focused on health, we forget that the vast majority of our of our society is still struggling just to figure some of this stuff out. And so, and it's a victim of the economies of scale mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. And so, with that said, <laughs> when we make the decision to invest in higher quality food, sometimes we're investing many times more money. Absolutely. And that can be discouraging, you know. But I'll tell you this I, before I say this, I, I've got to say this part. Investing in myself was the best decision I ever made, though, you know, because that it returned thousands and thousands of yes. times over. But initially, I was taking some risks. Right. <laughs> all right? I was just with my with my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, bare, like I was a university student. I had my own little business, my strength conditioning coach, coaching and just getting started. So I was buying like goji berries from the Tibetan School of Medicine. Oh, it yeah. wasn't just at the, the local uh, <laughs> health food store. All right. So it's just I like, that. oh, I shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> yeah. but I have to see what you happens, you know. But yeah. then eventually, you know, I ended up getting goji berries for free at yeah, a, a certain yeah, point, you know, yeah. because life will, you know, kind of 
repay you and pay it forward when you make decisions that are from a higher perspective, from an advantageous perspective, not just for yourself, but for the world at large. Mm -hmm. And so I have to say that first. Now, couple that with the fact that definitely when we go to a, a Whole Foods or a Mama Jeans, that's another oh, little health food chain. Okay. If we go to, uh, there's one uh, here in our local area called mm -hmm. Fresh Time, mm -hmm. right? It's a new, newer place as far as, far as from, from my experience. Sure. And so these places are popping up all over the, the country and all over the world, really, that are ushering in and, and supporting and bringing in brands that are not using GMOs, that are using organic, that are using grass-fed, that are using um, things that aren't treated with pesticides, herbicides, right. fungicides, right. genocide. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's avoiding those things. You know, you can go in there and know that you're going to get a high-quality product. Mm -hmm. The issue, though, again, is the cost. Oh, yeah. And so how are we getting around that? Well, something that has been saving us so much money, it's absurd. I know that we've probably with the rest of the year here, we're probably going to save at, the, at least $1,000 okay. easily is by shopping through Thrive Market. Okay. Thrive Market is a membership community that uses the power of direct buying to deliver the world's best, healthiest food and natural products to the members within Thrive Market at wholesale prices and to sponsor free memberships for low-income American families as well. And this has just been game changing. You know, first, when I started using Thrive Market, I I was kind of shocked. Like, how is it possible? Because like this higher quality, you know, the toothpaste that doesn't contain fluoride or, mm -hmm. or parabens and that mm -hmm. kind of thing that we've been using for a couple of years, it was half price. And I'm just like, how is this? Po and I get free shipping. <laughs> so I was just a little bit like weary, like, is this even going to last? How are they even able to do this? And right. what they do is they partner with brands. They partner with the best brands. They cut out the middleman and give directly to the customers. And the membership, it lasts for an entire year when you when you get a membership, and it pays for itself within the first purchase. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Right. And so and also— that's not an unfamiliar model. We do that all the time. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of memes going around, too, on, <laughs> on the interwebs. Uh -huh. And there was one with Michael Jackson. I think it was the— She's out of my life song, right? And he's like sitting in a dark room and like looking down, looking sad. And it's just like thinking about how much money I spent on food, you know? And it's just like when I saw that, I identify yeah. with that so much. Yeah. But part of that too is the experiments that we have to take on, you know? Like, I don't know if this is going to be good or not because when, you, when you're getting higher quality products, sometimes they don't, they don't always taste the best. We'll put it like that. When you're, especially when you're used to uh, cheesy poofs, right? <laughs> with with super cheese whiz, like drilled into s double stuffed cheesy poofs, right? It's mad cheesy poofs, get it, get It's mad. It's <laughs> and so it's a whole different ball game, you uh -huh. know, when you're trying to eat the natural like sure, tortilla sure, chips or something, sure. you know? And so they actually take action to do some of the homework for you. What are the best brands? What are the tastiest brands? What are the products that are the most popular because they work the best? And so uh, they take out a lot of that time and energy and wasted money by getting the best brands in their specific uh, niche, you know, whether it's personal care, whether it's home cleaning products. Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. we get our, our, our laundry detergent, really? we get our dishwashing liquid. Okay. Yeah. Some of the stuff, again, you'll see I'm, at yeah. your favorite national <laughs> natural health store mm -hmm. for half the price. Sweet. It's crazy. So Sweet. what they have is between 25 and 50% off Great. the prices that you'll see at typical stores. And how are they able to do this again? They cut out the middleman and work directly with brands and then pass that savings along to you. They got the best brands and they've got categories you could check under when you go to the site. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-GMO, organic, you can look under vegan, you can look under gluten-free. Nice. They've got a really great uh, array easy. of gluten-free products, paleo, sustainably farmed, et cetera. And here's the kicker, guys. You will get an additional 25% off of your first purchase and free shipping plus a free 30-day membership. Ooh. By going to thrivemarket.com forward slash model health to start saving today and giving your family higher quality products without breaking the bank. Make sure to check them out. And on that note, let's get to the iTunes review of the week. All right. Here's a nice one. Five stars. It says outstanding job. Sean, your podcast took me and my husband on a total new level up. As a biologist myself, living a very disciplined and healthy lifestyle for years, I realized that there's so much more that I must still learn. We have been amazed by the richness and knowledge in each podcast. Great variety of all kinds of guests, 
from sportsmen to doctors. Each episode expands my horizons in an amazement of how unique our body is and the simple truth about the necessities to get back to basics. Wholesome lifestyle as God originally intended us to enjoy. Jade, you're a great co-host, and I like what you add to the show. Opportunity for simple people down to earth to process information or clarify as many as who listen, even average people who have no clue about scientific terms. You guys both balance each other well, and it's great to have a few jokes here and there as the brain is trying to process the just-received new and high-level information. Great job. Wow. Thank you so much for leaving that review for us. That is so powerful. I I just really don't even have any words to express how grateful I am to you and your husband. I appreciate you guys so much. And everybody, thank you for leaving these reviews for us over on iTunes. If you haven't left a review yet, what are you waiting for? Head over and leave us a review for the show. Uh, It means the world to me and, and Jade as well. It just helps to get the show out into the hands and the hearts of more people. So please make that happen if you uh, have yet to do so and keep them coming. I appreciate you so very much. And on that note, let's get to our topic of the day. So today we're going to be talking about just how important environment is to your health and success in life. And when you hear the word environment, we tend to think about trees. (laughs) We tend to think about (laughs) grass outside, water. (laughs) Environment is where you're at. All right. The environment is any of the world around you. Mm -hmm. All right. So Mm -hmm. Just to make that clear. Right. right. Where you work, where you live, your But play. if you want to hug a tree, it's all good. <laughs> I'm not I against a, a tree hug. <laughs> now, with that said, it really begins with the fact that we are not just products of our environment because we hear that very often, that you are a product of your environment. That person is a product of their environment, which is true to a large extent, which we're going to cover today. But it's important to really embody and understand that we're also creators of our yeah. environment. And I mean that literally like right down to the very atoms that make up our physical universe. And this goes right over to Princeton University physicist John Wheeler, who states that we live in a participatory universe. He says that the act of consciousness looking puts something in place. We affect the world around us at the quantum level and beyond. Now, this individual, just one of the most storied and kind of... um, admired physicists physicists in the world, he actually passed away recently in 2008. Mm. But he was also a colleague of Albert Einstein, okay. who you might have heard of. So yeah. he's been around yeah. a little while. Great hair. And John Wheeler also came up with the name Black Hole, which is describing this unimaginably dense, light-trapping object that now is thought to be common throughout the entire universe. And he was also one of the big proponents of something called the observer effect. Now, in quantum mechanics, the observer effect states that by the very act of watching, the observer affects the observed reality. And so to really sum this all up, because we're not going to get into a dense quantum physics lesson here today, but just understanding that these studies that have been repeated over and over and over again have found that just the the action of the scientists watching the experiment happen changes what happens in the experiment. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper to help you to understand how how this is actually happening Mm -hmm. in some of these components. But the bottom line is kind of like there is no reality without a witness. There is no reality without especially conscious witnessing, conscious interaction, co-creating our world. And literally, like, we can see the physical Result of that, with mm-hmm. all of the different things around us right now, these all, th- all of these things came from the mind of a person, you know, outside of the natural structures that we see as well. But man has been manipulating that for a while as well. But that's the power of our mind, but that's taking a physical action to it. But just the thought itself puts, puts things in motion and starts to change things. And so this, can, just to dive a little bit deeper, we have Dr. Vladimir Popenine, who is recognized as a leading expert in quantum biology. And he did this really fascinating experiment where they took, a, they had a, a tube and uh, a vacuum tube. And if you know anything about, you know, kind of scientific experiments, within a vacuum, there's nothing. Like it's an empty, totally empty space. Yeah. However, scientists also know that there are still going to be some particles, uh, uh, these, these photons are still going to be present just because you can't really get rid of them. It's mm-hmm. very, very, they're very, very tricksy. All right. <laughs> they're always finding a way to still be around. And so what they did was they took this, this uh, 
uh, vacuum and they added uh, some human DNA into the vacuum. And they had these photons that were just kind of scattered around within the vacuum. And something really interesting happened. When they put the human DNA into the vacuum, the photons conformed to the DNA. Like they all attached themselves to the human DNA and, and kind of put themselves in the shape of that DNA. What? All right. Now, okay, oh. that's just step one. So what they figured was that, okay, whoa, that's pretty interesting that that would happen, that mm -hmm. that human DNA would affect the very particles. And by the way, when I'm talking about photons, this is the stuff that our reality is made of, right. all right? This is right. the very kind of basic building block of our reality. So human DNA affecting it at that level. So they figured, you know what, we're just going to go ahead, we'll take the DNA out, and you would think that they're just going to go back, these, these photons are just going to go back to their random kind of scattered uh, position that they were in before. They took the DNA out and they were shocked to see that the photons stayed in the form of the human DNA, even after it was gone. And that's why this is actually called the phantom DNA experiment. And again, this is something that's replicated as well. And it's just so strange that human DNA impacts the physical mm -hmm. stuff of the world around us, we are whether you are aware beings. of it yes, or not. It's happening. So when I'm saying that you are a creator of your environment, mm -hmm. that is not a joke. It's not like, yeah, I can create right. my environment. You right. literally are, Presto. whether you know it or not. <laughs> Nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> now, I'm going to take this a, a step further. And mm -hmm. a lot of this data um, I was exposed to learning from uh, Greg Braden many years ago and just really fascinating. He wrote books like The Divine Matrix and just kind of had some really great uh, information that he was putting forward. And this is one of the first places I found out about the Institute of Heart Math. And they do some really just mind-blowing work there as well. And so what they discovered, they took, a, I believe it's called a magnetoencephalograph, and they were able to look at the biomagnetic field that's radiating from the human body. Mm -hmm. And they were surprised to see that there's this electromagnetic field that is emitted from the human body that stretches about five to eight feet from your body. Really? So your heart is like more, it has more electricity, this kind of bioelectricity, uh, electromagnetic energy than even your brain. Sure. It's like, and sure. we've been talking, you know, wow. for years and the importance of the heart and it's just mm -hmm. kind of this mm -hmm. pump if you look at biology, but it's kind of something else going exactly. on here. Exactly. And so here's what, that's what was powerful. found from that, because that's, that's interesting in and of itself. Yes. That even it, like right now, we're in each other's bio... Yes magnetic space yeah are and it's called a, a tube torus they're <laughs> interacting right and this is why you feel different around certain people mm -hmm. right but we shrug that stuff off all right so that's that's one piece so they did another test here uh heart math institute and this was where they isolated human dna again mm -hmm. and now they brought in people who were experts in concentrating their thoughts and emotions into this study and to interact with this isolated human DNA. And so these experts were told to express feelings of love, gratitude, compassion within the space of this isolated human DNA. And what they found was that the DNA relaxed. It kind of opened up, <laughs> right? It was, it, it literally changed its, its confirmation. Mm -hmm. It changed based on this feeling that these experts were emitting to it. Okay, already wow. weird enough. Wow. We've got enough weirdness in this episode already, yeah, but we're we just going to take one <laughs> weird step more forward. <laughs> Why not? And then we're going to transition to more of the content. But they also had them to emit some different emotions as well, uh, feelings of jealousy, mm. anger, rage. And what they found was there was a corresponding uh, constriction of the DNA. It started to coil up. It started to shrink itself. See? When exposed to those feelings. That's now, interesting that it didn't just move or dissipate, it shrunk. Yes. And that that negative energy. And what are you made of? Exactly. Energy. This, this is what you are. You're, exactly. You're, and you're made of DNA as well. Yeah, well, that too. And so <laughs> very, and this is an important point, is that very specific kinds of feelings have the ability to influence the mm -hmm. DNA of our bodies and of those around us. Yep. We have to be aware of this. Totally and this is looking at, we're talking about the cutting edge forefront of science here. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like this idea of science fiction, uh -huh. right? Because this is, seems kind of some Dr. Strange stuff here, <laughs> right? But actually being science fact, mm -hmm. all right? Now, big takeaway here is that we are affecting the world around us and the world around us is affecting us, all right? It goes both ways. It 
course. So I want you, as we move forward into this episode, to be empowered and knowing that you can still bring it to it. You can bring the charge and the energy to the situation, no matter what environment that you're in. You can be a light there. You can be somebody who positively influences the DNA of other people yeah. with your presence. Yeah. All right. So I want you to be empowered in that and coupled with it's going to be a whole lot easier, more graceful of a life if you can have some of that support around you as well. And you have the right, right. to that. So Ooh. now how do we actually create an environment that supports your greatness? And there's something really interesting about us humans is that we seem to be more empowered in what we believe in and what we can accomplish when we have the support and belief of others. Yeah. And the belief of the people, the support and the experiences you witness around you have a huge influence on your conscious and especially your subconscious thinking. So whether you, again, whether you realize it or not, the environment that you're in is programming you. Mm -hmm. And so this is why, and there's positive implications there, very, very beautiful implications. There's also some potentially negative and destructive implications. And this is why it can be so difficult, for example, for people to change, even when you feel inspired to. Even when you know it's the best thing for you, but you still find yourself reverting back to the same habits, the same people, the same places, and the same experiences. It's because your environment really helps to shape your, literally down to your DNA, down to your cells, and your subconscious thinking as well. And so for myself personally, you know, music is a big part of our lives, yeah. you know, and today I'm not a big fan of like, some of the messages, but, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's a nice beat, it's whatever, right. you know. Mama told me not to <laughs> sell work. That song is talking about selling drugs, yes, all right? It is. Not, it's, it's, it's got a little tight, tight, tight hook to it, but what about the reality for some people, mm -hmm. you know? And so for me, my, my mother didn't tell me not to sell drugs. Right. I had the drug dealers actually in my house. I had the drug addicts in my house. And in many ways, these individuals were my role models, right? Unconsciously and consciously. You know, some of the, you know, uh, at one point we had a next door neighbor who, you know, he had the car with the, with the beats and the rims and, you know, but he was, he was, he was selling drugs. And uh, I just, I wanted to hang out with him. I remember I got to hang out with him one day, drive around. And, uh, you know, I remember I got to even go to a party with him one time. Oh, wow. And I'm like... 14 years old mm -hmm. and seeing this, this was R. Kelly slow jam oh, so, time. All right. Yes, so I'm like, yes, this is, this this is, is right, hot right, right here, right. you know? And so a really aspiring mm -hmm. to be that. And it was, it was that, that was the for model. him too. I'm pretty sure it was that for him. One, a created economy, depending on what the situation in that community was, but also for him to be that, he felt something yeah. to be that for you. And who knows that when he was 14, Right. Of course. You know, we just replicate, yeah, you know, we do. We, we so, do what we know. And it's really important to understand that oftentimes we don't know what we don't know. Right. We don't know that there is another way of living. We don't know until we oftentimes have an example of what that can look like mm -hmm. or something, just even changing environments, which we're going to talk about today. But Great. like I said, within the household itself, you know, seeing uh, many of my family family members uh, really stricken and brought down to their knees mm. uh, in, in ways that you could not even imagine because of drugs. And there was some, there was some funny stories mm -hmm. along the way, but there was a lot of tragedy as well, you know. But one of those funny stories, <laughs> this is a true story. It's actually happened. Okay. Over even today, and this is full confession here. <laughs> I'm not really interested in having a family pet. All right, <laughs> it's because family pets have not fared well in the Stevenson household as I grew up. Oh, we had like probably I don't know. 15, 20 different animals that have come and gone. And just when you get attached as a kid, you're just like, but where, right. but where is Fuzzy? What happened to Fuzzy? What happened? You come home one day and just like, they're gone, right. you know, because of various reasons. <laughs> and ultimately, I finally, I always wanted to have a Rottweiler, you oh, know. Boy. And so I come home from school. This is in high school. Mm -hmm. And there's this Rottweiler. All right. It's, 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 it's a puppy, but it's a little bit bigger puppy. And I'm just like, What? what? This is amazing. You know, so I'm excited. <laughs> and I was like, is it mine? Can I name? And I was, and, and you know, my mom was like, yes, you can. I named the puppy felony. All oh, right. boy. Full disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Full yeah. disclosure. Mindset at the time thought it was cute. He was. Yeah. Anyways. He was tight. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I just vibing you. with my with my dog mm -hmm. for several days. And I go to school and I come home one day and I'm just like, uh, mom, where's felony? 
And she was like, ah. so my uncle who was on um, the drug of choice, crack cocaine, mm-hmm. And people that know that that have been through this experience oh, of having dope. family member, yep, they they will do anything just about to yep. make a deal happen to to get the drugs. And so he actually stole this dog, <laughs> it had a <laughs> microchip, him. and their their owners actually found the dog and came and got it. So oh, I'm just like, you got a dog, dog, you got a dog from him. Why would you do that? You know. Oh. And so ever since then. No attachments, it, and right. I'm a I'm an animal person in a way. Like I'll go to somebody's house, and like the the cat that never comes out will come up to me and like you know rubbing them. They're like uh, he never does that. Right. It's like oh he better get away. And I'll, I'll I'll pet him and and, and hang out <laughs> for a little while. But the feelings I, I'll I'll mm-hmm. cut it and, and get to moving again. That's but right. you know right. that's some healing that it my is. inner it inner is. child, mm-hmm. my small child in me, mm-hmm. needs to do. But we all could use that because it's usually down to a certain moment where something happened and at that moment we became resolved that uh, I'll never do or feel that way again or go through that again. And then we cut it off at that moment. And yeah. that may be a thing that could block some other opportunities, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, this is just a little funny story, but real talk, <laughs> it was funny, it was me and my little brother and sister growing up in a really volatile situation. It's not, again, that... My, my parents, my mother, and my stepfather were innately bad people. Right. They were doing the best that they could with what they knew at with the time and the environments that they came from. Mm-hmm. You know, very trying, uh, stressful, dangerous situations as well. And they just replicated that. They didn't have the wherewithal, like, I need to really create something different for my children. Everybody was kind of a, an attitude of just getting by. But there was a lot of, a lot of volatility in the household, a lot of uh, aggression and, and yelling every day, just mm-hmm. like fearful mm-hmm rage mm-hmm. and violence, you know, we'd see on a regular basis as well. And, and uh, you know, I'm not going to get into many of the stories here today, but, you know, I saw some things that I definitely would have an imprint. And even to this day, I can still vividly see as a, as a grown man. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. And the question is, how did I make it out of that environment right. and find a way to live a life of value? Mm. And it wasn't until, and I could actually mark this, it wasn't until I met a friend named John Clemens when I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. And what this did was, when I met John, and he lived in the county, right? We were in this so-called desegregation program where we're getting bused from the city out Uh to the the good school. And he actually lived out there with his family, you know, as an African-American family. And I hadn't seen an example like that before. I just didn't even know that that was a thing. You know, and jokingly, people call him County Brownie and these kind of things. <laughs> and so uh, we became friends, and I went over to his house, and it was so nice, mm-hmm. and it was peaceful, exactly, and it was loving, yeah. and it was attentive, yeah. and it was just new, and I felt very comfortable. I felt like I can go to sleep, and I know what's going to happen when I wake up in the morning, you know, and it just really kind of changed my paradigm, like, this is the thing, this is possible, and his his parents, like they were successful, you know, they were working and they were, um, you know, doing things in the community. Mm-hmm. And it was just really interesting to me because and here's a, here's a big takeaway point from this is that number one from today with our environment, number one, friends, our friends matter a lot. There is that saying that you are the average of your five closest friends, mm-hmm. be it your your finances, your level of happiness in, in life and your relationship your weight, Mm -hmm. your five closest friends, you take the average of those five and that's where you are. You know, that's, it's been said for many years now, but on a deeper level, our friends really, if we're looking at uh, Princeton University research here, yet again, they found that the human brain actually, quote, syncs up with other people's brains during conversations. Okay? Right. Princeton University your brain syncs up with other people's brains. Like your brain waves will start to match yep. just if there's some rapport and you have a conversation. You need to know this mm-hmm. because you need to be more aware of the conversations you're engaging in. Yes. All right. Because it is literally changing your brain. Yes. And your, a positive peer group is obviously of the utmost importance, especially as we're growing and developing as children. Uh, you know, all the parents are like, you know, don't hang out with those kids. You don't want which kids <laughs> hanging with the bad kids. But well, maybe your kid is the bad kid, you know, <laughs> right. so we got to change the your environment, the get your kid, That's right. get our kids proactively. Just be more aware of this That's because funny. it's not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. There's going to be situations. There's going to be curveballs 
galore. Mm -hmm. I know this. Right. I intimately know this, but the more that you can engage in this and do approach this consciously, the better. And also positive examples. So that's number one is friends. Be more conscious. Like part of our thing is like we're fearful that if we move away towards a uh, kind of a, a negative relationship with a friend of ours who maybe they're the ones who are always getting us to drink, right. but we're still making the choice though. I'm not giving you right. the pass, but that's <laughs> what they're about. They're just about, you know, getting high or maybe they're even committing crimes, right? And it's just like, I'm in the environment. Guess what? You got to understand where that's going to lead and be more proactive. When you let go, you're making room. I promise you that. That's the thing that we don't really seem to understand. So often we're hanging on to the old ways that we we can't make, we can't fit in anything new because we're already caught up mentally with this old situation. So we have to be willing to let go to make room. I love that. Yes. I love that. And in each case you mentioned, there's still, so even on the positive side, there was that that impact, that exposure, that moment where things changed, yeah. things shifted for you. And I want to take it even a step further beyond just a friendship, but just some Key association. So mm -hmm. high school. Oh, I was great in all the core classes except for science. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, I just couldn't get that grade right for nothing. Mm -hmm. Our teacher paired us up for a project. And one little girl that nobody wanted, she paired me with. And she she was delightful, but she yeah. was so incredibly shy. It used to just really debilitate her. She wouldn't speak up. She wouldn't try new things. And then she gets paired up with me. So she probably was dreading that situation right. at the moment. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. But I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm overplaying. Just, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, no disrespect. It's okay. No disrespect. It's okay. You're, you know, I'm in the five. I'm just thinking I'm of the two extremes. I'm sure. Know? I'm sure. Like, no offense taken, really. I'm secure. I'm secure. Really? No. <laughs> I'm totally secure. But in that exchange, that partnership on a project, that yeah. working together on something positive and yeah. a shared goal, I learned how to appreciate and look at science differently. Wow, yeah, yeah. And I never got a C again. I had A's and B's for the the for the rest of my educational experience. Yeah. She, in turn, opened up and started trying new things. She went out for the track team. She would have never done wow. the athletic. Right. So yeah, it's just I love that Jay. Right. Coming together on something you and and we did end up being friends, but we just, you know, <laughs> over time and distance we we didn't get to be around each other much, yeah. but it really changed the way things worked for me. You know, in knowing that I could and having that experience from being with her. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. That just brings to light something remarkable in this is that it seems like these instances that really change us, that get us to wake up to these things, they seem like random happenings. Right. Right. I called it. But there's <laughs> there's this kind of core thing within us within us that wants to be happy, that wants to be healthy, that wants to be great. And it's just, I think that over time we start to settle mm -hmm. and we don't really acknowledge that we have this calling within us that wants to get outside of that paradigm because I could have easily not been friends right. with John Clemens, sure. you know, but uh, things aligned in my life for that to take place. And also, so that's number one is friends. Number two here on really focusing on what can we do to change our environment, to cultivate a happier, healthier life. Number two is immersing yourself or enabling yourself to be around positive, positive examples of the future. Okay. Positive examples of the future. So my future seeing, I want a family like this. Mm -hmm. I want a house like this. I want a relationship. I want a feeling like this because it's really the feeling that we're after. Yeah. It's not the thing. It's the feeling. Mm -hmm. And John's family was sort of, <laughs> it's sort of like the family from Family Matters, <laughs> right? They were Even great. Carl Winslow, right, yeah. on the show, yeah. he was in law enforcement. See? John's dad, wow. law enforcement. Right. Was it Urkel? It's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I guess I, with a little edge. I guess I was like the cooler Urkel <laughs> right, coming right, in, like right. got any cheese, <laughs> like eating up all their cheese or whatever. Right, right. I did eat a lot of cheese uh -huh. back then. Did but, I do that? <laughs> <laughs> did I do that? Right. My bad. <laughs> right. A little bit, a little bit cooler. Right, right. Steve Urkel. But yeah. yeah so uh, but couple with oh, during this time also, uh, I met a teacher who took a real interest in me, and her name was Miss Blackmore. Mm. And this was when I, uh, um, this she was an English teacher. She was a writing, or a language arts teacher. And there was this part of the semester where we were writing poetry, you know, doing the haikus and the little free <laughs> freestyles. And, and uh, she actually took one of my poems and she published it in the school newspaper. And when she did that, I remember 
hearing it over the the intercom, mm-hmm. you know, my little poem, and I it made me feel so special. Like she made me feel special. She made me feel like yeah. what I wrote mattered. It does. And in essence, she really made me feel like my voice mattered. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm coming from an environment where you have to you have to speak up, you have to be loud, you have to be aggressive to be yeah. heard. And now this was a total opposite. You know, this is like also poetry, right? right? And and really feeling like I'm heard. And I took that. I was I was always a, a good student, mm-hmm. but this made it attached to something. Like I've really felt like I like to write. Like I I started to like something, and I didn't just feel like I had to do it. Right. So that's that's another really important component here. And this is number three on this environment and shifting that for for health and happiness is that teachers and mentors matter, and they matter a lot. Now, we we have to come at this, again, consciously, knowing that our mentors and the people that come into our lives that we get to learn from and approaching that relationship in a more conscious way. Because sometimes we <laughs> kind of fumble and screw things up yeah. because of our old yeah. programming. Yeah. And so what I mean by that is that around this time, also, uh, my, my heroes in the streets, we, after we moved to a little bit better place. But they still come around from time to time. And I remember uh, seeing one of them um, and he came over to to my mom's house and he started to look less and less like Nino Brown. <laughs> right. Because, you know, shout out to New Jack City. Exactly. You've never seen that movie. Yeah. But Nino Brown was like this top character like this. You know, he had all of this mm-hmm. fortune and fame and coolness. He started to look more like Pookie. Right? <laughs> right? He's starting to change. This is a yep. Chris Rock yep. character, you mm-hmm. know. And I'm just like, What's hmm. Right. And you might idolize this individual, but you have to be aware of where that path ends. Yes. And I think that too often we think that I'm not going to end up like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to still do the same dangerous negative thing, but I'm not going to end up like right, that. I'm right. smarter. I'm smarter than you. Mm-hmm. I'm smarter than him. And so it's important that we really face and be aware of the results and seeing specifically in the lives of the people around you. You have to be aware of this. You have to open yourself up, open your eyes, and and just just look at it. Would you take a look? Would you look at it? <laughs> but your friends and family members <laughs> who don't take care of their health, and yeah. this is something we all, everybody listening, I know that you more than likely have battled with this, especially as you've engaged in a more conscious, healthy lifestyle, working on yourself. You want the people around you to do the same thing because we Absolutely. love them. Absolutely. And so uh, those individuals who maybe drink too much or commit crimes against other people, you need to wake up and really understand and be honest about where that ends. Because the more that you're engaging with that, the more likely that it's going to pull you back in over and over and over again. And then it goes back to your point about energy. So you'll be pulling away or apart from that energy. What was the T word you said when they come together? Our energies meet up somewhere in the middle. It was a total tubular, (laughs) totally tubular thing that occurs and you'll actually have to pull away because it's almost like it creates a whole nother entity. Are you talking about the tube Taurus? Tube Taurus, okay. yes. <laughs> yes, The yes. bullish tube there, yeah. yes. You have no choice. Exactly. You have no choice. But again, this is why, again, we're not just products of our environment, we're creators of our environment as well. So we can influence those things. And we'll circle back around and talk oh, about okay. how we can best do that. But for me, and then... Uh, after I graduated high school, which we did an episode and talked about some of the big struggle that I had uh, in high school with it, actually getting kicked out for a year of high school yep. uh, because of fight. Mm. And this was again, and we'll put that in the show notes and um, make sure to check that episode out. That's a good one. But that was just, again, it's important to understand that even when you change environments, you're still taking yourself with you. And it's important to understand that. Just because you change environments doesn't mean that you that, that change happens automatically. That's right. You have when you change environments, we kind of like, oh, now it's on easy street. Right. <laughs> now I'm out of here and it's gonna be no, you have to be proactive too. Because the change, the environment will change you. But if you can proactively change along with it, it can be game changing much faster. And for me and so many other people, part of that really taking and embracing what's happening. Uh, and, and the messages that are coming from our mentors, our most trusted advisors, is letting go of our inner know-it-all. All yeah. Right? And so, and th- this is important to understand because you might think that that's not you. Mm-hmm. But let's be clear. Nobody, that's everybody over there. Nobody wakes <laughs> up in the morning every day hoping other people would tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Nobody's like hoping somebody, I hope somebody today tells me what's best for me. Right. 
right? And they're because quick to do that. We already feel like we mm-hmm. got that handle. We don't want somebody else telling us that. But many times, even if you ask people for their advice, you know, what you're really doing is you're just wanting them to affirm what you were going to do anyway. All right. That's why you're asking advice. You're not really asking so that you can change and do something different. Right. You're just asking for them to affirm what you already wanted, what you were already going to do. And when they don't do that, guess what? You create resistance. When they don't do that, you might start to have a little bit. Of pro- well, they're not that good. <laughs> yeah. You, start you know, to because that's what we do with our inner know it all <laughs> that, so that gets true. us into a lot that of is trouble. So true. And it's important for us to understand that we are emotional creatures and the emotional creatures that we are, we get our mind set on something and we could put rationality and wisdom from others to the side because we're so emotionally attached and invested in something. And for example, it's like, oh, you've been married happily for 10 years and deeply love each other. Well, I know that my last five relationships ended terribly, but I think I got it this time. <laughs> right. right. Your example is cute. Yeah but your advice isn't going to work for me. Right, right. These are some of the subconscious things that we're unknowingly <laughs> doing. or uh, And also asking, like, with a situation like that, whether it's with finances, relationship context, health, mm-hmm. like somebody's got, they got something figured out. And it's like, well, that's, uh, I think I got it. <laughs> it's like the last 10 attempts have failed. So why would we do that? Why do we do that? Why, we do, why do we brush off the great opportunity for mentors and people who have the results that we want is that this we have subconscious beliefs like these. Mm. Here's one. Oh, that's just them. Right. They have the fill in the blank advantage. They have more money. They have more time. Mm-hmm. They spend they have more time to spend with each other. They only have three kids. <laughs> I have five. Right. right? I don't so know there's who these would say that. there's these different things <laughs> that we'll say in our heads. Oh, that's just them. And also another thing that we'll do, we justify that others' lives don't have a resemblance to ours. When in fact, we all have the same human needs and the same driving forces. And we are generally more similar than we are different. So with this example, we'll justify that, you know, they live over there. They have a totally different lifestyle. But I promise they just want to be happy. I promise they just want their family to be healthy. I promise that they want to have enough uh, money at the end of the month instead of month at the end of the money, yeah. you know, so that they can have a sustainable livelihood. I, I promise that they want to uh, do some good in the world and and help other people. It's very difficult, again, for any of us to do that when our own needs are not met. Like if we go back to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like mm-hmm. basic stuff. And another thing that we do here to justify not following our mentor's advice is we think that we can figure out a better way. And that is true to an extent. It can be true, but the wisest among us use our mentor's path first and then builds upon what others have already figured out. That's the whole saying of standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm-hmm. All right, success leaves clues. Yep. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. Why try and reinvent the wheel? We've already got one. Right. I'm going to make it. a wheel with a wheel in the wheel. <laughs> right? Just just do this. Start Those here are first. Spinners. Oh, gosh, don't even bring that up. I'm just saying, you took me back. I'm going back with you. (laughs) I thought you were talking about the little fidget spinners. Well, those two. All right. Those those two. I went back to the the growing up and the influence Mm -hmm. of the the spinners. That was status. The the spinners on the rims. Yes. Yes. Of course. Respect. 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 Now, also... We think that we, this is another, this is really big. Mm -hmm. And why we're not following that sage advice is that for whatever reason, we tend to think that we have more time than we actually do. (laughs) So this is why we'll just go ahead and pine away, take another unnecessary risk instead of just learning the lesson, instead of taking that advice, instead of taking that information that you might have taken from a physical mentor, mentor, somebody you know close to you, or even a virtual mentor, Mm -hmm. right? Somebody that you've Learn from by seeing their videos or listening to their audiobook or something like that. Or their podcast. And now one other thing here is that we think that we can change other people. And this is a big issue as well. Because when we're talking about moving towards a more healthy, sovereign, positive environment, we think that we can change other people. And that's kind of why we resist doing this step. When in reality, all change is an inside job. All change comes within the heart and decision and mind of the other person. You cannot change somebody. You can force them, but human nature is to 
rebel and fight back. Mm -hmm. If not physically, at least mentally to withdraw. Now, again, all change is an inside job. You can't force somebody to, to change who doesn't want to change. We have to really let that hit us hard and really just take that take that lump because it's this is one of the tough things for us to 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 take on and to understand in our lives especially if we love people yeah. but you can't force someone to change who doesn't want to change mm-hmm. so that's the first thing is we've got to maybe even manufacture but life has a has a way to manufacture these uh situations themselves manufacture a situation where they they have to change right right but we want them to just change just because we know that it's best. Mm-hmm. And so as an aside here, what is the best way to go about encouraging other people to change? Now, we've talked about this on past episodes, but just to kind of summarize some basic tenets here, you know, some basic ideas that you can carry with you, because I get this all the time, you know, with, with people who, you know, see me at a live event or, you know, messaging me just like, I'm really focused on improving this area of my life, but my... Yep. My it's my kids are really making it difficult for me. My significant other, mm-hmm. my husband, my wife, my girlfriend, boyfriend, my parents. We've got these different areas where, again, these are the people you love the most. They're causing a lot of uh, interference, seemingly, with you getting to your goal. And so how and they're asking, like, how can I get them on board? Mm-hmm. Who? If I, that's loaded, right? Yeah, that's totally. like, that's the that's the magic question right there. And so here's what I've learned from my firsthand experience, again, working clinically with thousands of people in a one-on-one context, but many hundreds of thousands of people through other, you know, through, through mm-hmm. live events and things of that nature. First and foremost, the best thing you can do for them is to be the example. Be the example. Focus on you. Because again, you can't change somebody who doesn't want to change. So who can you change? yourself. You can change you. Focus on that change. Focus on improving yourself and focus on improving whatever area of your life that, 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 that you're working towards. Put your heart and soul into that and be ready to combat a little bit of the negativity blowback at you because it's going to come more than likely and just keep moving forward. Understand that they love you still yeah. and they're just, you know, especially when you start to see somebody change because you're interacting mm-hmm. You know, that tube Taurus right. that we talked tube about. Tube Taurus, I got it locked in now. They're interacting. Mm-hmm. They're going to feel differently when you're around. Yes. Right? Yes. And especially if they're used to one feeling and now it's different, even though it's better, even though it's more positive, let me put it like that, mm-hmm. that can create a negative response because it's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to feel that way. Mm-hmm. I didn't choose to start to feel this good and this like inspired. Right. Right. It be a shocker. So, so be if you want to make the world a better place, you got to make the change with the man in the mirror. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I knew you was going right. with me. <laughs> now, next up, you want to tie the change to something that they want. Mm-hmm. That's another way to open up that that change portal for them. Because, again, you can't change somebody who doesn't want to change. How can you make it so that they want to change? Just tie the change to something that they want. So great example, my oldest son. With him really dialing in his nutrition, I I tied it to his athletic endeavors. Mm -hmm. And he's seen the results firsthand. He's got other kids just right there, you know, following his lead at his school, uh, making better decisions as well. You know, like today he went in, he had a football camp this morning. He had his Organifi. He had his protein powder, all this stuff. And he's just fueling himself up. And yesterday, like, the, the amount of work that he put in yesterday, I was just like, I haven't told him. I was like, "You're gonna be, a, you're gonna be a mess tomorrow." Right. And he's like, "No, I'm not." And I, I don't usually speak like <laughs> you're not that. Not worried. I don't usually speak like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, "Why are you putting?" Because he had two practices, then a, a 15 minute leeway, then another practice he chose to take somewhere else that he didn't have to do, <laughs> and then he was working right after that. You know, his little part time job at yeah, the gym. That's absurd. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. But you know, the thing is, he's like. I know what to do. I'm going to focus on recovery. I'm yeah. going to make sure I get a great night's sleep. And he scripted out his whole day. I love it. When I was picking him up yesterday uh, from the job, he's like, it started off this morning. I felt so, I didn't feel tired when I woke up this mm-hmm. morning because he got off the screen. Yep. <laughs> he got he's off the screen. all the tools he needs to make this And that right. was the catalyst. And also, mm-hmm. you know, he's doing the the Ease Magnesium. I love and it. guys, if you're not utilizing that, make sure to check that out. That's at easemagnesium.com forward slash mile. That's E-A-S-E magnesium.com forward slash model. 
So check that stuff out. But he's us- utilizing that. He's even doing the deep soak, you know, for the bath mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously optimizing his nutrition as well. So now we're going to move on to another point here with affecting change in the lives of others, inspiring that change, is to be consistent yourself. One of the resistant parts is like somebody knows that when I make this change, I'm going to have to be consistent. And if you can show them what that looks like, if they don't see you bouncing around up and down, left and right with what you're doing with your uh, exercise routine, you know, getting to the gym or with your food, like, you know, I'm doing this whole healthy thing. (laughs) And, you know, then, you know. You come around a couple weeks later, and you've got some white castles. You don't even like, want me to tell the story. <laughs> and you, it's like, what? In, the, in their brain, they're like, yep. they're kind of like, yes, they're yeah. back, chicken rings. <laughs> but in reality, you want to be consistent yourself. And another thing here is, this is a huge tool, guys, is direct them to someone else. Okay. Really? Direct them to someone okay. else. I like that. It's because Save this yourself. proximity, <laughs> there, there's two parts to this. Proximity yeah. is power in one degree, but another degree is Proximity breeds familiarity. It does. You know, so they're just like, oh, you know, if it's your mom, for example, it's like, I changed your diapers. <laughs> and you're going to tell me how to get my blood sugar together. They know you so. But they're not saying this outwardly or even in their uh, approach to you, but this is like subconscious there in their mind. Like they think they know you so well and to see you change or talking about change, it's it's it might be difficult for them to wrap their mind around. So the best thing to do, hand them a book. Sleep Smarter. Mm-hmm. It's been it's one of those one. gifts. And mm-hmm. I've seen it so many times. You know, people send me an email or tag me on social media that they've given the book to their to their mother. They've given the book to their to their sister who's have, you know, sleep problems. And that's a really powerful way to go about it. Uh, podcasts make it super easy. Oh, you can send your podcasts to people. Um, audio books, articles, things like that. Allow somebody else, allow another person to to do the work for you. And so that was just a little aside here and something that I know impacts a lot of our lives, which is how can we encourage the change in the lives, the health, the happiness, the well-being, and the people that we care about. But to really shift gears and get back to how do we create an environment that's encouraging to us, that's encouraging our success and our health and happiness. And I've got a fourth point for you that I'm going to share right after this quick break. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Massive research is now pouring in with this blossoming field of science and nutrition called nutrigenomics. And this field is studying how every single molecule of food that you eat impacts your genetic expression. So we're literally talking about how your body appears, your health, or lack thereof. All of this is going to be determined by every single molecule of food that you eat. So whether it's a banana or a donut or a hot pocket, Whatever it might be, we have to be in tune with the fact that this is going to impact what genes are getting expressed. And there are genes like the FTO gene, for example, that has been found to be this, quote, fat gene and have a high propensity towards obesity if you carry this gene. Now, you can silence these genes by making sure that you're eating real foods that are in alignment with your own genetic integrity. The basis of that needs to be from earth-grown nutrients. Things that your body actually recognizes as real food that you have a history with, that your ancestors have a history with, not things that have been invented in the laboratory like last week. All right, so we want to make sure that we're eating real food that are from earth-grown nutrients. And this is why I love On It so much. This is why they are family. This is why I endorse them so powerfully because they are part of my life. They're a part of my family's life. And I want to make sure that you head over to onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. And you're going to get 10% off all of their health and human performance supplements. I'm a huge fan of the Hemp Force Protein. I've been using it for many years. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And I give this to my kids as well. And this is one of the things that I love to have post-workout. Now, hemp is based on some powerful uh, amino acids, some powerful protein building blocks like albumin, which is a very soft globular protein that's very easy to digest. Plus, edestin. And this is a unique protein compound that's found in hemp that might be the most bioavailable, usable protein for the human body. Crazy, right? So a lot of people today are hearing about the benefits of hemp, hemp seeds and hemp protein and and hemp oil, things like that. We want to make sure, again, that you're getting organic and that it's made with integrity, right? So that this cold process, so that you're actually able to get the nutrients that you're looking for in this kind of protein powder, protein cake that you're getting with Hemp Force Protein from Onnit. They've got multiple flavors. They've got the Chaco Maca. They've got the vanilla acai, and they also have a brand new recovery protein that adds in 
the powerful component of colostrum, which has every single amino acid, every polysaccharide, aka essential sugar, and every essential fatty acid right there in it. These powerful building blocks, growth factors, every growth factor that influences your body's metabolism is there in that protein, uh, the recovery protein. So make sure that you're checking that out as well. Super powerful stuff. Also has immune factors to help uh, fortify your immune system. Just great stuff. And they've got exercise equipment, tons of great foods. Head over, check them out today. Onnit.com forward slash model. O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash M-O-D-E-L for 10% off. Now back to the show. All right, we are back and we are discussing today how to create an environment that supports your greatness. And the next point here that I want to discuss is when we're working to create an environment that supports our health and our happiness and our success, we want to seek an environment that offers accountability. So that's the fourth point. Seek an environment that offers accountability. And we talked earlier about the observer effect in physics. There's also an observer observer effect in psychology as well, also known as the Hawthorne effect. And this is a form of reactivity in which subjects modify an aspect of their behavior in response to knowing that they're being watched. All right. How often would you change when you know you're on camera, right? If you know somebody's recording your activity in an elevator, are you going to be making out a, a halat with right. your significant other or, you know, a, a random, yeah. you know, in an elevator if you know you're being watched? Some people are going to change their behavior or at work, right? Mm -hmm. You're changing your behavior at work because you know somebody's watching you. Or if we want to take this to uh, the level that we're discussing here, working on your goals, eating the right foods for your body and your goals, uh, making sure that you're at the gym. You know, a great part of this uh, today that lots of people are taking advantage of is, is having a trainer, mm -hmm. right? It's that accountability. It's an environment where the accountability is persistent. It's persistent within that culture, right? So that's something that we can seek out and take advantage of, you know, when we're really working to put this together for ourselves. Again, we want to put this stuff on automatic in our lives. And me being a strength and conditioning coach for, you know, well over a decade myself and seeing how many people were just having that, knowing that I'm waiting on them, oh, knowing man. that I'm the accountability, that, that I'm there looking out for them, Let really motivated them to take action, to to show up and to get the work done until it becomes a part of who you are. Yeah. And it's also about knowing yourself too, you know, know thyself, <laughs> right? The the great tenet, mm -hmm. know thyself. Some people, they they must have that accountability in order for them to do certain things. Like they know that this is not my sweet spot. Yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk is a good example of that. I had a, a conversation with him and he's just this megastar mm -hmm. online. I think he's got a new uh, show coming out on Apple, right? They're, they're doing movies now or shows, TV show, something like that called Planet of the Apps, right? It's him, Will I Am, uh, Jessica Alba. All right. Right. With Gary Vaynerchuk, I love her. right? Yeah, yeah. Which one? Some people don't know about Gary V, you they know, would. but they definitely will. Yeah. And so he's just he, he he started off online. It's kind of this YouTube. He's a YouTuber, right? Doing the 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 video shows, right? He's had his own show, Wine Library TV, and it started off with his father's wine business, which was maybe a couple million dollar business, and he took it to like hundred forty million dollar business mm -hmm. by leveraging activities online. And he's like he has a book called Crush It. Right. There's a little parody on the crushing of the grapes. Right. But also <laughs> crushing it in life. And he has that persona. And so we were actually uh, we, all, we were having dinner together and it was him and, and a, a group of amazing people. And I asked him about this, like, I see your switch now, like you've been like focusing more on your health and fitness lately. What's going on? He was like, you know, I, I, I'm starting to play the long game now. I was very short sighted. I was going after my goals. I was crushing it. But if I'm going to be here and actually like his goal is to own the New York Jets, <laughs> if he's going to own the Jets and real talk, I mean, he he's well on his way, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. um, I, I need to play the long game and I need to put more attention into this. But I know myself. This is something I don't care much, much about, except for the end result. So I he hired somebody that travels with him to make that sure happens. he's doing mm -hmm. his food and mm -hmm. his exercise. Most of us don't need that kind of accountability. But and some people are like, well, I don't have the means to do that. There are always ways. ways. We talked about this before. Oh gosh, it's about being ways. resourceful, yes. not having a lot of resources. Because if you're creative enough, if you're uh, devoted enough, yep. if you're 
uh, funny enough, mm -hmm. right? There's different things Charming. in yeah. our character and in our skill set that we can utilize to make things happen. Absolutely. Right. And there's something about that word resourceful because right. we, we're full of sources. They're all around. It's just how are you going to re-engage them for yourself? Yeah. They exist. You know, what's so interesting today, we have online accountability as mm -hmm. well. A lot of people are involved in different groups, Facebook groups and things like that, where people are like putting their information out, tracking. You're like, I'm starting this thing, you know, and I just want to let everybody know that I'm going to be doing. You know, there's different ways to go about this. There's social accountability mm -hmm. and there's even just partner accountability, a one-on-one -on -one partner. There's but another good one. It's called um, the Fat Loss Code. That Sean, <laughs> right. St Sean Stevenson yeah. created that has that accountability and uh, Sean actually checking in with us a few times a week and on yeah. a regular basis to help us with that as well. Yeah. So the fat loss code dot com. <laughs> if you're not in the fat loss code program, we got a there, really great there. group yes. of people there. But so I wanted to really summarize this with uh, seeking an environment that offers accountability with this important aspect of work. Right. Okay. Our work, when we're thinking about environment, it's not just some, because today we might be thinking about, well, my home environment, mm -hmm. my hangout environment, but also your work environment. That matters a lot because yes. this can be one of the primary places where we're making poor food choices, where we're making poor relationship choices, where we're engaging in gossip instead of like, how can I uh, get my bank account together or how can I get my health together? I'm talking about what... Uh, Blank, feeling the blank Kardashian was doing, you know, <laughs> and not to say that you can't do that, right, right. but it can get skewed and we can get caught up in what's not important and, you know, basically majoring in minor things. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. so thinking about that as well, that you can actually take yourself and implant yourself in another work environment. It is possible. You know, the first thing that's going to come to mind is like, I can't just change jobs. I have such and such. I have bills to pay. I have this and that. That is true. And I understand that. And I've, I've def, I definitely understand know how many jobs I had before I graduated. Jobs, you got 14 jobs. <laughs> Crazy stuff, you know, just to, you know, take care of my kids, yeah. to, you know, pay the bills. The stuff but I had to that. keep my eyes on the prize. I had to keep my locus of focus. Like, where do I really want to be? Mm -hmm. What's the career that I really want to be involved in? How do I really want to serve? How? What makes me really light up and, and makes me excited to get out of bed in the morning? You have that right to do that work. You have to choose it, though. Yeah. Nobody's going to choose it for you. And it's not like sometimes it's like, you know, I'll one day, one day out, someday aisle, someday right? Aisle. Someday aisle. That's the that's the trip we want to go. I'm going to go to someday aisle. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Tom Hanks is going to be there yeah, with a crack coconuts. That's right. That's right. But someday aisle doesn't exist. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like it, well, maybe some Bermuda Triangle. You got to mm -hmm. be careful. Mm -hmm. right? You got to be careful around there. <laughs> but that place where we're put, postponing it, it's what we need to do is really start to see it now. Yes, right. Right? That's right. And understanding with quantum mechanics that your intention, your energy right now is creating your life. Yes. And so to take more ownership of that, that it's already happened, it's already done and act in that way, mm -hmm. that body that you want to have, you have to become it in consciousness first. How does that person talk? How, what is the internal dialogue that that person has? How do they engage in relationships? Right. Are they in disempowering relationships and, and negative relationships with other people who are taking advantage of them? If, is that that kind of person? If not, you got to switch gears. How does that person walk? How does that person uh, function in their job? Like, are they, you know, they want to have a better job, but they're doing a terrible job at the one that they're at? We're, we're bringing uh, the 82% the work ethic to the job we're already doing, and we expect we're going to go 120 when we do something that we really enjoy, when it's a, it's a, it's a habit, it's a way of being. You know, how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you can bring that 120 modality and that attitude towards the work, the place that you already are, that's a, a signal to all of life that you're going to carry that over. You already have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. You already have what it takes to do this, this, this higher order job where you have more responsibilities and things like that. Because that's the issue is that we're... We're so often like, you know, once I get there, then I will. Mm -hmm. You do it now. That's right. That's right. right. And including your now is an environment that you're in now. So you might have your site set. You can create, say it's that at that desk and you need to maybe put a plant there or put some almonds there or mm -hmm. it puts a, a sign up and say, I'm put working on Put an almond a, plant. Put an almond plant. <laughs> How about that? But or even a sign, if you even if you're in a cubicle, you can put a sign and say working on a project 
Mm-hmm. Please don't disturb or something. There's ways to create, you know, that now also can support the goal you're setting and and your sites that you're setting forward that you were just talking about. Yeah. So then there might not be a someday aisle, but there is a meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile Boulevard. Meanwhile Boulevard <laughs> that you can um, also utilize to take the right path to get there. Yeah, love a that. A direct love path that. to get there. Mm-hmm. So put a plant on your desk. These are the <laughs> a jade line, plant. Put a, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a jade stone. Why not? Something. Why not? All right. Great so for your kidneys. That's the four points <laughs> that we've covered thus far of how to create an environment that supports your greatness. We're going to move to number five, and this is something really important. Number five is understanding deeply understanding that proximity is power. Right? Proximity is power. You want to get yourself proactively in the environment of the things that you want. Get yourself in the environment of people with great health and fitness. Get yourself in the environment with people who have their relationships handled. Get yourself in the environment of people who have the financial success that you aspire towards. This is a call to action and something that you can implement immediately. Uh, Number one, get, get involved in some masterminds. We talked about this on an episode mm-hmm. with Pat Flynn, which we'll put that in the show notes. That was great. And he's one of my favorite humans walking around. <laughs> uh, I love Pat Flynn. And he's created just an amazing life for himself out of desperation. You know, again, he, he didn't see for, foresee where he is today, but it came out of some pretty, you know, a tremendous hardship and something that's kind of uh, shattering his dreams, you know. But there's always a way. And it's just how much clarity can you get on who you want to be in the life that you want to have And he details that story, but also how powerful masterminds are. Another thing is meetup groups. Mm -hmm. There are meetup groups popping up all over the place. That's (laughs) kind of the whole point of meetup groups. But uh, one of the things, I just talked with Eric Thomas, you know, Dr. Eric Thomas, a.k.a. E.T., who's been on the show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Again, one of my favorite people. And so they do these meetup groups with their uh, Breathe U students, the Breathe University students when they go to different cities and things like that. But the students, and they were sharing this with me, I was talking with his his, his uh, business partner, CJ, that the people within Breathe University are getting together themselves mm-hmm. and hanging out. And we have that same component within the Fat Loss Code as well. People are connecting. They have their own accountability partner, that kind of thing. But proactively go and go to meetups, uh, go to masterminds, or you can do these virtually as well. We've got Skype. We've got Google, uh, Google Hangouts. Mm-hmm. We've got so many different tools that you can leverage. And the other one here, proximity is power, live events, right? Yes. Make a decision on how many live events you're going to attend in a year. That's what I do. Is it going to be two, two live events? You know, pick, pick that. Or is it going to be four or five, whatever the case might be. Pick a number and then find out which two or five, four or five it's going to be. <laughs> and so that's what I do every single year. I'm like, you know, I'm going to, for, for my own personal yeah. immersion mm-hmm. and, and continuing education, Because a lot of times, you know, I might go to an event and I know, quote, no, 90% of the information, but that 10% can be game changing and it can help me to serve at a higher level. And that's what it's really all about. But sometimes also going to things that are really outside of your realm too, where it's just like, oh, I've been there. Like all like, like you just get hit with the fire hose, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's so much uh, kind of paradigm shifting information. So do that. Live events, get yourself in proximity because some of the biggest transformations happen at live events because there's an emotional opening as well. And to really drill down with change to the brain, it happens through repetition. We've talked about myelin in depth on the show and kind of this insulation over uh, nerve pathways firing in your brain. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Another way, though, is an emotionally charged event you can create because something that you might not have repeated in your life you can bring up that memory. It's so clear, but it was something that was very emotional. That's what Jim right? Quick taught us. Right. And mm-hmm. so maybe this was uh, maybe even a, a tragic event. Yeah. Maybe it was a beautiful event, you know, the, the birth of a child, things like that. This can be something that is right there and, and it's drilled into your memory, but it was just one time. It was just one instance mm-hmm. because it was emotionally charged. So that's some of the powers of getting yourself to those live events and understanding that proximity is power. And number six, this is our final point here. In today's episode on how to create an environment that supports your greatness. Number six is to deeply, and the every point here today are things to, to really deeply understand to work on, but for us to embrace the fact that there are no barriers anymore to you being in a different environment. 
there was a time, you know, during my childhood, like if you go outside, nobody can get in touch with you. There's no such thing as a cell phone, you know? And there was always like, if you wanted to, if you wanted to learn something, you got to go to a library. Mm -hmm. If you want to know something today, pull out your phone and you can answer any question you can come up with. Like, where's Waldo? Right. It's going to try to figure that out for you too. Siri, where's Waldo? Right. right. Um, but here, the, the reality is, and this is, you know, in, in, in all seriousness, the answers to questions that heretofore we didn't have access to unless you were in the group, right? You're in the insiders. You were, you were one of they, right. as DJ Khaled would say. <laughs> but they today, to there know. are no barriers. Yeah. You have access to instant information about anything that you want to learn right now. And it's up to us to take advantage of that. And one of the mediums for that, for changing your environment, right now you are with me. You're in the Model Health Show community. You are part of this with me. And podcasts, utilizing podcasts, that changes your environment. It changes your mental space. And this is a huge opportunity. It's every, there's hundreds of thousands of podcasts right now. And this is available for all of us at the click of a couple of buttons on our phone or on our on our device. And it's never been exi- this has never existed before. This is like you, some of these things are university level education, you know, and it's right there in your phone. Some of your episodes right? are university. So we've got podcasts, we've got yeah. videos, yeah. you know, all the amazing things on YouTube. Like today, a lot of people and I've done this, too. You don't just Google it. You YouTube it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same thing there. So you immerse, your, immerse yourself in that culture and it's hitting another one of your senses. Though podcasting is my preferred medium because you can go anywhere. You know, you have that net, no extra time, mm-hmm. right? N-E-T, that you can imbue and, and take part of, in this education and this information and really change your thinking via that way. I say that you don't have to say no to something else in order to say yes to the podcast. Yes, you yes, know. I like that. Mm-hmm. So podcasts. Videos, social media, same thing, no barriers. Follow people who inspire you, right? Again, we following uh the blank Kardashian, you know, that's <laughs> one thing, and I'm not you don't have to unfollow them. But if you want to feel motivated and inspired and to get tips and strategies to improve your life instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses, mm-hmm. then Follow those people that really put you in that mental space, that make you feel good about yourself and don't make you feel like you're not enough, right? right? You have that opportunity. Another way that you're creating the environment. What environment are you engaging in on social media? What's that? What's your social media environment look mm-hmm. like? Right. Be conscious about that mm. today, moving forward. Books, audio books, these are the timeless things or, or books, these relics now sometimes, you know. <laughs> you don't often see books as much as you used to because of all these other, other mediums, but... It's another valuable place to really change your internal environment as well as the external. You know, having that physical book in your hand is an experience. It is. And, and so, let me just say, in all these things you mentioned, if you found a connection with us and the Model Health Show, all of those places, Sean makes it a point to be available there as well, as many places as possible. There's a meetup with the Fat Loss Code. He's on social media at Sean Model. You can, you've got the audio book. You even have the tangible book. Live events. You have live, live events, events all every over the place. potential way to make a tangible connection. And if you've already got one here, there's a way to continue that and expand on that. Just like you said, until you actually get it or you want to take it further to the next level. Yes. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one more point I want to reiterate here is take advantage for sure of these different mediums. Listen to the podcast. But well, here's another takeaway and something I've done personally, re-listen. Yep. Oh, re-listen. Man. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to the same audio interviews and lectures over and over and over again when I was getting started in really transforming my life. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I just like, the, and I had them on CDs, right? And I just like <laughs> right. put them, you know, burn them out because I was really changing the way I was immersing my brain and my thought process in that information till I knew it better than the person telling me, (laughs) you know? And so really utilize these tools, but don't just be like, I know that already re-listen because I promise here's the beautiful part is that nine times out of 10, you find something that you missed nine times out of 10, you hear something differently in a different tone or different texture, a different color than you did before because you're different. You're different. And you're, and you're, you have this updated version of yourself and you're listening to something you previously have, you're going to see something different. That's the power of, of these different mediums. So 
Again, there are no barriers. Immerse yourself. Be aware of your uh, online culture, your online environment as well, because all of these are really going to help to create the body, the life, and the health that you truly want. And I really hope that you got a lot of value out of today's episode. I can't stress enough how important this is. You know, I've seen this firsthand in my own life in, in many different ways in the lives of the, the many people I've had the opportunity to work with and to serve and how important our environment is and how we want to be conscious co-creators in that because your environment, you have no choice but to be influenced by that, but you are also influencing your environment. So you want to work on those both ways and make this today the mandate to start in that direction. You know, take the small step here or there. Maybe it's just doing some social media house cleaning, mm-hmm. you know, whatever <laughs> the case might be. But it's really, this doesn't really make change until you make change, until you take action on it. So I'm encouraging you today to really take action, to put something in place, to make a real tangible difference in your life. I appreciate you so much for tuning into the show today. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss a single thing. Subscribe on whatever medium you're listening to the show, whether this is YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Make sure you're subscribed so you stay up to up to date. And I promise you, we've got some guests coming up on the show. This is going to blow your mind. This is going to just going to blow your mind. <laughs> also, some of the show topics that we're going to be covering, I I'm just I'm very very excited about what's coming next. So, make sure to stay tuned. And I appreciate you again immensely. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.